In my previous video, The Cryptid Lost Media Iceberg, I covered pieces of cryptid evidence that were partially or completely lost. I didn't get everything, and in this video, I'm going to cover even more cases of lost cryptid evidence. If you haven't seen the previous video, you can watch it either before or after this one. Link in the description. Historian David Murray Rose, in a 1934 letter to the Scotsman, claimed to have found a mention of the Loch Ness Monster in a 1520 book of folklore, as well as a land sighting in a 1771 diary by an ancestor of his, but no one has ever found them, and he doesn't cite his sources. Rose is a respected historian, so if these accounts are real, they might be at his collection of books housed at the Edinburgh Archive. Additionally, he also has personal notes at the British Museum, but these are hard to access. This one is very disgusting, so be warned. In 2012, an Australian-Serbian actress was allegedly assaulted by a Jabal Fofi, which is a giant spider cryptid, and the incident was recorded. The details of this tape are very disturbing and mature and can't be repeated on YouTube, but needless to say, I'd advised against searching for it. There are reports of people having a copy of this tape, but of course, they can't produce a copy for one reason or another. I also couldn't find any mention of the actress, Sabinj Tomatovic, anywhere besides stories of this case, so it might be a fabrication. Jeff the Talking Mongoose was a strange mongoose that allegedly possessed the ability to speak. The mongoose first introduced itself to a British family by telling them that it was born in New Delhi, India. The mongoose, named Jeff, would tell his family very odd things about himself, like that he was a ghost in mongoose form, an earthbound spirit, and a really smart mongoose. However, the daughter of the family claimed that she had seen the creature, and that it was about the size of a small rat with yellowish fur. Some physical evidence for Jeff was allegedly produced, like hair and photographs, but these were found to be from the family dog. There are a number of theories on what Jeff was, from believers, to skeptics who thought it was a hoax, to others who speculated that it might have been a split personality of the father, once the family left their home, the man who bought it from them claimed that he had shot Jeff. Jeff's body was displayed, however, some of the family members disputed that it was Jeff, and the body eventually went missing. As far as I could find, there was never any serious scientific inquiry or examination of Jeff's body. In the book Phantom of the Pines, authors McCloy and Miller wrote that one of the earliest written references to the Jersey Devil was an October 1790 diary entry from a woodsman who lived in what is now Brendan T. Byron State Forest, formerly Lebanon State Forest, named Vance Larner. Vance wrote, It was neither beast, nor man, nor spirit, but a hellish brew of all three. It was beside a pond when I came upon it. I stopped and did not move. Nay, I could not move. It was dashing its tail to and fro in the pond, and rubbing its horns against a tree trunk. It was as large as a moose with leather wings. It had cloven hooves as big around as an oak's trunk. After it was through with a tree, it yielded and awful screamed as if it were a pained man, and then flew across the pond until I could see it no more. While doing research for my Oklahoma octopus video, I saw someone claim that he'd taken a photo of the Oklahoma octopus. He described the photo as being taken near Lake Thunderbird. Besides that, the sighting isn't too detailed. After an Irish family noticed wild dogs preying on their flock of sheep, they put out poison to stop them. While the plan worked, they inadvertently killed eels that had been in the nearby lakes. The eels were 3 and 4 meters, or 10 and 13 feet respectively, which would make them the longest freshwater eels in the world. For comparison, the freshwater New Zealand longfin eel only reaches about 1.5 meters, or 5 feet in length. The McVeigh family then took a photo posing next to the eels, but this photo has since been lost. Additionally, the fate of the eels themselves is unknown, as it's not mentioned whether or not they were preserved in any way. 
A Japanese news program was on an expedition to the Congo for proof of the Mokele Mbembe when they captured footage of something in the water. It's unclear if the available footage is all the evidence they recorded on the trip. Part of the video was previously lost, but has since been found. The Pine Lake Monster is a large lake creature native to Pine Lake, Minnesota. In a podcast with Scott Martis and William McDonald, William states that the carcass of one was photographed, describing it as eel-like. He claimed to have one of the few existing copies of this photograph in a book that was loaned to him by a guy who stole it from county officials. He was hesitant to share it, stating that it wasn't a high-quality photo, and he believed that the county would sue him if they knew he had it. In December of 1980, multiple witnesses reported strange lights in the skies near Suffolk, England. A security patrol followed these lights, and reported seeing a strange, metallic object moving through the trees. An investigation several hours later found burn marks and triangular imprints in the ground. Two days after the initial incident, a few servicemen went and recorded somewhat heightened radiation levels in the area. They also spotted flying lights nearby. Years later, it was discovered that there were multiple missing government files related to the incident, Although some have claimed that these missing files were mostly about public inquiries into the incident and not directly related to the sighting, many remain skeptical of the disappearance. Around 1990, near the abandoned Australian town of Adamsfield, a dead thylacine was allegedly photographed, over 50 years since the species went extinct. There are a few conflicting accounts of this story. The Rusty account claims the thylacine was found already dead, and the Bailey account claims hunters accidentally shot it. Both accounts claim that photographs were taken of the body, some of which we do have. A third account by a Colin Coomber claimed to have seen the photos, and stated that the hunter didn't want to release them out of fear of public backlash. Coomber stated that the man who showed him the photos had somehow obtained them from the hunter, though he can't release them due to legal concerns. However, Colin's description didn't quite match up with the others, so it's possible he's talking about a different case. Of the photos we do have, all of them seem to come from Bailey. However, both Rusty and Coomber describe photos that we don't have access to. These include a full body photo of the animal lying on the grass, a photo showing the teeth and tongue, and one of the animal's tail. If you'd like to look through all of them, I recommend the Adamsfield Thylacine article on wherelightmeetsdark.com. I'll link it below. I'd like to give a special thanks to Sydney Yea, Enigma of Ears, TheThunderbirdPhoto.com, Beneath the Wild, The Center for Fortean Zoology, Lord Mongrove, Enola Gaia, Flodo McFlutilu, Anonymous, Roland Watson, Archangel4444, The Cryptid Archive Wiki Editor, PME Your Ears, Thor Longwis, Equar Rep, Where Light Meets Dark.com, One Mega Alakazam 100, The Late Scott Mardis, Michael Schemmel, FPS 0077, and viewers like you. That's all for this video. Remember to watch part 1 if you haven't already. If you'd like to see more, you can support me on Patreon, like this video, and subscribe to the channel, and follow me on all the other platforms I'll have linked below. If you want to see more cryptid videos, I'll have a link to all of mine in the description. I also recently set up a Discord where I'll have sneak peeks and discussions on upcoming videos I'll include a temporary link to below. That's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.